Hi, Richard Whitlock and Mike Gibson coming to you live from ACC 2021. And Richard, we're talking about left atrial appendage closure surgically in this study. Uh, talk to us about what you did and what you found. Great. Uh, thanks, Michael. Uh, so the study presented at ACC is LAOS 3. It's been a, a part of a left atrial appendage occlusion uh, series of studies. Um, that LAOS 1 and LAOS 2 were pilot studies building up to that, um, in which we learned um, the occlusion techniques, uh, which were preferred, uh, as well as the patient's, uh, or excuse me, the study design uh, so LAOS 3 was the culmination of that. This was a multinational, uh, multi-center, uh, so 105 centers, 27 countries, and we randomized 4,811 patients to establish um, whether surgical left atrial appendage occlusion, in addition to oral anticoagulation, um, resulted in uh, protection against ischemic stroke and indeed, the punchline of the study is that uh, that is the case, that uh, we saw from the time of surgery, a 33% reduction in stroke or systemic embolism over a duration of follow-up of 3.8 years. Um, if one looks beyond the higher risk perioperative period in which we you know, have patients suffering for a stroke for other reasons, cross clamping the aorta, cutting out calcified aortic valves, et cetera, things that are that are uh, really cannot be mitigated by left atrial appendage occlusion. So beyond 30 days, the effect of occlusion is 42% reduction in stroke. So, and again, importantly, in addition to oral anticoagulation. So instead of this tension of oral anticoagulation versus uh, occlusion, we have something that's additive and really uh, improves the outcome for uh, surgical for surgical patients. Tell us a little bit about who these patients were. Were they undergoing cabbage anyway, and you yeah. just went in and, uh, and included the atrium, or did they have cabbage and AFib? I mean, who who were the people yeah. who were enrolled? So, so a few important things here. So these were patients who are undergoing cardiac surgery for other indications besides atrial fibrillation. Um, they had atrial fibrillation as a baseline and a chad VAS score of at least two. Uh, so these were uh, high-risk patients uh, for stroke events. In fact, the, the mean chad VAS score of this population, uh, once we'd uh, enrolled the entire cohort, was 4.2. So um, wow. average, average age, 71 years. Um, in, in terms of, type of types of operation, only 20% of them actually were isolated cabbage. Two thirds of these patients were uh, underwent some type of valvular procedure. Uh, this is important, as as you know, Mike. Many of the previous AF trials involving anticoagulants really exclude valvular AF. Laos three did not exclude that population, and indeed, this benefit is exists in that population. We looked at all sorts of subgroups, age, sex, um, type of atrial fibrillation, baseline uh, OAC uh, type. Um, uh, the, the use of ablation or not during the surgery, and this effect was consistent. There was no p-value uh, for interaction that was significant. Visually, if you look at that forest plot, everything was to the left, uh, demonstrating um, benefit uh, across all of these important subgroups of left atrial appendage occlusion. So you had to have been on an oral anticoagulant in the past at entry? Yeah. So again, um, you know, what, if you look at baseline, just over 50% of the patients were actually treated with oral anticoagulation. As we know, adherence and compliance to oral anticoagulation um, is, is low um, out in the community. Once patients get on these dr drugs, they tend to fall off of them. So at baseline, just over 50% uh, were on oral anticoagulation. At uh, discharge, obviously, that was much improved. But uh, over the three years of follow-up, um, the use of oral anticoagulation fell to about 75%, which is still exceptional. Uh, but, um, you know, uh, further dives into this data will reveal what exactly is the impact of coming off oral anticoagulation and that interaction with left atrial appendage occlusion. Um, you know, we, we have looked at preliminary, uh, had a preliminary glimpse of that. It is a complex situation in that there's intermittent cessation of oral anticoagulation coagulation or complete, um, but the, the results look consistent as to whether you were on oral anticoagulation or not, but we'll be doing a deeper dive in the future in, into that.
When you say oral anticoagulation, was this largely warfarin or was it a blend of NOAX? And so what were the drugs? Yeah, so um, initially um, at hospital discharge, the dominant oral anticoagulant was warfarin or VKA, um, as this was a uh, global trial. Um, the, uh, the tendency was over the um, duration of follow-up, patients were gradually switched over to uh, direct oral anticoagulants. So, and again, we've, we have explored that. Uh, results look very consistent across the types of oral anticoagulants. Wow, well, uh, will this change practice? Uh, 100%. You know, if, if the patient has the profile of a LAOS patient and they're undergoing cardiac surgery, um, that left atrial appendage should end up in pathology. Uh, you know, this is a, uh, a, a safe intervention uh, there was no impact on perioperative mortality, no impact on bleeding. And importantly, you know, one of the questions in this field is when you take this structure off and it's a structure that's rich in atrial natriuretic peptide, right. do, you worsen, you know, do you worsen heart failure? We right. did not see any, any adverse effects of left atrial appendage occlusion on hospitalization for heart failure. That is very important. So safe, effective for stroke um, prevention. Uh, you know, if the patient's having cardiac surgery, for uh, some other reason, they have atrial fibrillation with elevated stroke risk, that appendage should come off. It also opens up this new paradigm of uh, left atrial appendage occlusion in addition to oral anticoagulation. And again, in, in future studies, you know, we need to explore that as options for our higher risk patients. Yes. Why did our creator make a left atrial appendage? <laughs> Yeah, so so the, you know the left atrial appendage is really it comes from the embryologic development of the heart, so it's a, it's a leftover remnant of, of that. So you know uh, it, it's uh, uh, you know obviously our anatomy is not perfect, uh, but uh, you know it's it's something that we can improve on uh, if they're undergoing cardiac surgery. Let's take it off. So note to file: we wish we'd had separate osseo for the LAD and the CERC, and we wish we didn't have a left atrial appendage. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, no kidding. <laughs> you All right. got it. Well, wow, groundbreaking stuff. Thanks for sharing it. And uh, I look forward to seeing it in a publication. We'll be out in a major journal. It, 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 simultaneous publication in the New England Journal. So, Congratulations. Great work. Thanks, and uh, thanks for joining us. And thanks to all of you for joining us here live from ACC 2021.